fill my mouth with the word that sets men free. Let the name of Jesus be exalted in all that we do and say. Lord, I thank you that the word would not return, return void, but it will do that which you declared it would do in Jesus' name. And everybody shouts. Amen. Amen. Let's open our Bibles this morning to the book of 1 Timothy. And, and you know, we're living in challenging times, but I think every generation had its challenging times. And we believe the word of God that greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world, that no weapon formed against us can prosper. If, and, and he said he'll never leave us nor forsake us. Now, there's some dangers in the Christian walk. Some would have you to believe that there's no dangers, there's no possible stumbling points, there's no snares, but there is. And I want to deal with one of those this morning because, see, what God wants us to do is to express or to reveal his divine character in all that we do and say. See, people need to see Jesus in you and me. He really, they really need to. And in the book of James, James went to quite an extent to declare that we need to be doers of the word and not hearers only. Because something happens when we hear the word and we don't do it. And the, the, the scripture literally says that what happens, whether we know it or not, we become self-deceived. And that's what it says, but be doers of the word and not hearers deceiving your own self. Now, as I, as I begin to minister this truth to you, I want you to realize that, that, that do not for a second or for a moment think about anybody else. And what I'm talking about is don't be thinking about somebody else saying, oh, yeah, they're missing it here and they're missing it there. See, what we need to do is we need to apply the word of God to our own heart, to our own mind, to our own life. We need to put ourselves in that situation and let God deal with us. See, that's a trick of the enemy. What the enemy wants to do is he always wants to say, oh, that's for my wife, that's for my son, that's for my neighbor, that's for my, my, my minister, that's for, you know, one of the other brothers or sisters. But really, it needs to deal with us in a direct way. Now, take a look here in the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 3, and look there in verse 16. And notice what it says, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. Now, this is a great mystery, and you could say it's an awesome and amazing and astounding mystery. It's a mystery. See, the kingdom of God is a mystery, and the carnal-minded man cannot receive it. you got to be spiritually minded. And actually, in order to understand the word of God, you got to have a hunger for the things of God. And matter of fact, Jesus, actually, when he would share the parables, it said that a lot of people didn't understand or comprehend what he said. And he actually thanked the Father that they did not understand it because Jesus came looking for those who were hungry and thirsty and longing for spiritual truths. Those who wanted to know the truth. How many know many times the truth hurts? And so we need to understand that without controversy, for in other words, there's no arguing about this point. There's no debating it without controversy. Great is the mystery of godliness. And there's actually five major things that he's going to point out to us. And now we're not really going to discuss these things, but we just want to look at them for just a moment. Notice, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. For God was manifested in the flesh. God took upon physical form, Emmanuel, God with us. God himself became a human being. His name is Jesus. Now, he's not like the Jehovah Witnesses says. He's not a God. Hello. He's not like the Mormons say. He's just one of the sons of God. He is God in the flesh. And it says that he was equal according to the book of Philippians chapter 2 verse 5. It says he was equal to the Father, but he took upon himself the form of a servant was made in the likeness of sinful flesh. So we need to understand that God became a man. Now, now, now that, that's because he who made all things, who spoke all things into existence, became flesh and blood. Now, the reason we, 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 we really need to look at this, because why did he do it? And how does it affect our life? How is it going to influence our life? How is it going to touch our society and our, and, and our generation? And we need to really look at this, because this is a great mystery. God became a man. And notice what it did here. It says, and he was justified in the spirit, or another translation, or another way to say this, is that he was proved to be holy, to be sinless, to be without spot or blemish. 
So now what we're looking at this morning is the nature, the character of who God is. We need to know who God is. The most important thing is you've got to know who God is. And the second thing you need to know is who you are in God. But on the flip side of the coin, you've got to understand who you are outside of God. You've got to know who you are in God because the Bible says if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You've got to know who you are in Christ, but who are you outside of Christ? Well, Pastor Mike, I thought once you were born again that, you know, uh, that you are good to go. Well, no, do you know you can be born again and still walk in the flesh? Huh? For the flesh and the spirit? Huh? But you know what? If we walk in the spirit, the Bible says we'll not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So there is a spiritual war that is going on. There is an a, a, a invisible war that is happening in our lives every day because there's a divine influence and there is a demonic influence. Now, a lot of times these demonic influences that are at work in our life, we're not even aware of them. That's why the Bible says that you need to pull the beam out of your own eye because sometimes we don't realize the demonicness that is going on in our lives. Now, other people can see it that are spiritual. Other people can see it. And when we do see demonic activity going on in people's lives and it's all over the place, we don't become critical of them. We don't become judgmental of them. We don't become condemning of them. But we go to God and we believe for them to be delivered from the stronghold that is in their mind. See, the Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. See, we got mighty weapons. Say mighty weapons. We've got mighty weapons. Now, we are living in a generation that extremely is deceived. Now, a part of the reason why a lot of the church is deceived is because it says because they had pleasure on unrighteousness. See, but that's a stronghold of the devil. And it says there, we discussed this last week, it says in meekness, in meekness that we are to speak to those who have been deceived that peradventure they might recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. So we understand that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in the high places. There is a, why is it so hard to love God? Why is it so hard to serve God? Why is it so hard to obey God? Why is it so hard to go deeper in the things of God? You know, it, 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 you know, it doesn't really take a lot to get born again. That, that's not, that's not, not that, that's not, that, that's just the beginning. But you know what? If you just want to be a nominal a pew warmer, you want to be lukewarm? You just want to be lackadaisical? Hey, it's easy to do that. But if you want to go deeper in God, if you want to go higher in God, if you want to go further in God, if you want to become just like Jesus, you are having a fight. And don't think, matter of fact, Paul, Peter said this, don't think it's strange concerning the fiery trial, which is about to try you as though some strange thing has happened to you. Uh, how many of you have had, a, have had a, at least one fight within the last year with the enemy? How many have had a fight at least once in the last month? How many of you have had a fight within the last day? <laughs> How about the last hour? You know, right now I'm, here, I'm up here by faith because in the natural, the, the enemy has been afflicting certain parts of my body. But I'm not going to glorify him. Thank God by the stripes of Christ, I am healed. If I was, I am. If I am, I is. Amen. Tell somebody, thank God I is healed. It may not be proper English, but it's biblical truth. <laughs> I is healed. Amen. And I walk by faith and not by sight. But I want you to notice this is a great mystery for God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit. For in other words, he was proved to be holy. For in other words, he lived a sinless life. He was tempted in all ways as we are, yet without sin. And guess where that Christ lives now? He lives in me. The overcomer. He that spoiled principalities and powers now lives within me. Say, he's in me. And you know, that's what Paul said. We preach, we preach Christ in you, the hope of glory, whom we preach, warning every man, instructing every man that they may be perfect. Say, perfect or mature in Christ Jesus. See, we need to grow up in Christ Jesus. But now there's a fight, there's a struggle, there's a wrestle, there's an enemy that's out there, there's demonic uh, 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 powers out there, but he overcame principalities and powers and made a show of them openly triumphing over them in it. He said, behold, all authority, how much? All authority and power has been given to me in heaven and earth. There is no reason why we cannot overcome. 
And the reason why we do not overcome is because well, there's many reasons why, but one reason is lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. But because thou has rejected knowledge, I have rejected you. So a lot of times it's not that the truth's not available, it's that we don't avail ourselves to it. And so here God is, God becomes flesh. Here he is, he's holy, he's sinless. He's seen of angels, the Bible says. Or for another words, it's I believe, really believe with all my heart, the angelic being cannot look upon God. And that's the first time they literally seen God in a physical form. Now, I know that the children, the Bible says that even children's angels stand before the presence of the father all the time. But that doesn't mean it looks upon them. Even cherubims or the cherubims, they got cover their face. They cannot look upon God. And matter of fact, you know, the Bible says that no man can look upon God and live. Amen. See, that's why you got to die to the flesh to see God. If you don't die to the flesh, hello, well, I just don't see God. You know, the more you die to the flesh, the more you see God at work in your life. I'm telling you, when I was out in the world, I didn't see God at work in my life. All the times I should have been died from the drugs and the driving and the violence and the people I ran with, I was involved in gunfights. I'm telling you what, man. I remember one time some people were shooting at us, and me and the guy I was with, man, we had rifles, and we started shooting back, and I thank God they didn't hit me, amen. I don't know if I hit them, <laughs> you know. I was just probably about 13, 14 years old, man. We had a gunfight out in the back of a farmer's field. But I'm so glad that he kept me, but see, at that time, I didn't know God's hand was upon my life. But as I began to look upon the face of Jesus, how do I see Christ? Through the word of God. You know, Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. I, you know, Paul said, I want to know him. And, and to know him is to see him, to see him as he is. And so the angels saw him. Now, notice what else it goes on to declare here. We don't want to spend a lot of time here. But God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, or proclaimed to the heathen. Who do we proclaim? We proclaim Jesus Christ. There is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. We preach Jesus. See, I'm on, I, I, I have decided I'm on no other crusade. I'm preaching Christ and him crucified and resurrected. I'm preaching Christ is the answer. He's the solution. He's the antidote. He's amazing, awesome, and astounding. I preach Jesus Christ. I exalt Jesus Christ. The Holy Ghost comes to exalt Jesus Christ and to bring back to our remembrance everything he preached and everything he said. Because he's our all and our all. He's our everything. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He's the amen and amen. He's all I ever need and all I ever wanted and all that is sufficient. And so that's who we proclaim. We proclaim Jesus Christ. Now, in the midst of that, all the promises, all the blessings, all the provisions, all the covenant is wrapped up in Christ. For all, the, all everything in him is yea and amen. <laughs> everything in Christ is yea and amen. Everything that God spoke in this book in Christ is fulfilled, and it's yea and amen. It means because of the blood of Christ, because of his name, because of what he has done, it's mine as a covenant child. And it's yours. Tell someone it belongs to you. Well, Pastor Mike, if it, if it belongs to me, then how come I'm not appropriating it? Then, well, that's what we want to talk about. We want to help you appropriate it. We've got to help you get it from the realm of the invisible, the spiritual, which is more real than the physical. And we need to bring it down into your fleshly, earthly body. We need to bring healing into your body. See, God wants to manifest his son in your body. Do you know when you get physically healed, that's Christ manifested in your body? Did you know as I'm speaking up here, as I'm preaching under the unction and the flow and the move of the Holy Ghost, that's Christ speaking to you? That's the word of God become flesh. Healing is the word of God come flesh. Wisdom is the word of God come flesh. The fruits of the spirit, love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, is the word of God made flesh in your body. It's made flesh in your mind, made flesh in your mouth. When you lift your hands, that's the word of God being made manifest in your flesh. Because the Bible says, lifting holy hands without wrath or doubting. When you praise the Lord, the Bible says, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. That's the word of God being manifested in your flesh. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Well, Pastor Mike, I just don't see God. Well, why don't you see him? I see him. Lift your hands. Woo, God, is, look, there's God. Shout a little bit. Well, I, I, just, I just heard God. I just heard God. You know, Jesus said, if you don't praise me, the rocks will shout out. The rocks will praise me. 
And so we, as we do the word, see, that's what we, we got to be doers of the word. I've got to do the word. Well, Pastor Mike, I just never have an opportunity to do the word. Oh, you're so wrong. Every moment, every second, every hour of your life, you have a chance to do the word. Now, here's the thing. A lot of people, they want to be doers of the word when it comes to exercising authority and getting people healed and casting out devils. But, you know, there's some devils you got to cast out of yourself sometimes. You hear what I'm telling you? There's some things we got to deal with in our own life. Because if we can't have victory in ourselves, then how can we have victory over the devil out there in the world? And so notice it says that he's seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world. And the word believe actually lets to make it more personal. It means embraced. When, when you believe something, you embrace it. I'm embracing Jesus Christ. I'm embracing him. He's my lover, my friend, my hope, my provider, my healer, my psychiatrist. He's, he's my all in all. I'm embracing Jesus Christ. And so he was believed on in the world. Aren't you glad that there are those who are embracing Jesus Christ? You know, sometimes you look around you and you see a lot of, uh, 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 you see a lot of glitter, a lot of, a lot of fluff, a lot of smoke and mirrors. But there are people who love Christ. You and Elijah thought he was all by himself, didn't he? He said, oh, Lord, nobody else loves you but me. Everybody's forsaken you. And God spoke to him and said, no, there's 5,000 others. Amen. There's 5,000 others. You know, he was all by himself. Praise God. You know, we're not by ourselves this morning. Look around. <laughs> so there's people who are embracing Jesus Christ. But don't allow yourself like Elijah. Now, Elijah was a man of God. He, he prayed, and it did not rain on the earth for the space of three and a half years. He prayed again, and the, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. And he was a man of like passions as we are. See? And God heard him. To say this. God hears me when I pray. See, that's manifesting the word. When you pray, God hears you. And it says he was received up in the glory. He ascended up into heaven. He's the ascended Lord, and he's coming back again for his church. Now, as we look at this scripture, this is the thing I want to point out to you is the nature and the character of God. See, we know that God is love, don't we? God is love. We know that, that God is holy, that, that God is a consuming fire. Well, how, do, how did God give expression to his nature and his character? How does God give expression to who he is? And that's who, how we discover who he is. See, and, and that's got to translate into our life. How do we express God in our life? How do we express his joy? How do we express his holiness, his peace, his love, his faith? You know, because it is his faith. He's the giver of faith. He's the author of faith. He's the completer of faith. It all comes from him. So Christ is in me. If you're born again. Now, if you're not born again, you can get born again this morning. And the incredible seed of the word of life comes into your heart. Now, you need to give expression to Christ, right? I mean, we walk around T-shirts. What would Jesus do, you know? We need to get, how do we give expression to Christ? Because I believe that's the major problem within the body of Christ. That simply people are not using what they already have. How many even know that the majority of the human race, the majority of human beings now alive have a head, have a head with a brain? How many know that? Okay. How many know? Now, some of you don't. I'll pray for you. How many know that most human beings have a tongue? Most of us have tongues, right? <clears throat> well, you know how many know that we all, most of us have hands? Okay, you just used your hand. Okay, well, just because you have something doesn't mean you're going to use it. <clears throat> you know, just because Christ is inside of you. Michael, bring me some water up here, won't you, or Stephen? Just because Christ is in us doesn't mean he's going to be revealed. Well, really, what our purpose and our object this morning is to help you reveal Christ. Now, I'm going to tell you this right now. What I'm going to share with you, your flesh isn't going to like it. But you know what you do with your flesh? You do with it what, if you're a good parent, you do with it what you do with your children. Be quiet and do what I say. No, if you're a good parent, your kids ain't telling you what to do. You're telling them. Oh, it's a little bit shocking. Oh, no, that's not what psychiatrists believe. <laughs> no, they don't. They're full of devils. See? You know, we used to have the golden rule, and I'm not saying exactly that we couldn't have been more flexible and more loving in this, but we used to have a golden clue, that kid, a rule. My dad used to always tell me, children ought to be seen and not heard. Now, I'm not saying that's exactly true. You need to communicate with your children. I understand that. But I think we've lost some of that today. I, I think, I think we, we've allowed our children to become the teachers when we're supposed to be teaching them. 
And we're supposed to be showing them how to live and how to walk and how to talk. Amen? So Christ comes along and he shows us. Now, if you'll notice how Christ interreacted with his disciples, just one, thank you. Oh, that was for somebody else, wasn't it? Let me have a little drink here. How come so much, Pastor Mike? Because my daughter's always picking on me. She's always saying, Dad, you need to drink water. How much water did you drink today? How much did? Because you know what? We're made up of almost 90% water, aren't we? Okay, well, let's take a look over here in the book of James, chapter 1, because we're going to get into a little bit of nitty-gritty. And we're going to deal with some issues that here we are coming into the year 2009. Now, your future is in your hands. The destiny, the outcome of your life, now I'm not talking about all physical things, I'm talking about your eternity, is really in your hands. You're going to decide you are today, basically, or you are who you are today, based upon the decisions you've made. If I'm making wrong decisions, I need to start making right decisions. I've made some wrong decisions this year. How many have you? Huh? See, the Bible first, you've got to acknowledge it. You've got to confess it because if you don't acknowledge it, you'll never change. If you're under the deception that you are, you, you, there's no area in your life where you're missing God, you are extremely deceived. Because, and as we get closer to the light, even the prophets, they used to think they were really walking in the perfect will of God and God would show up and they'd fall on their face. And, and see, God, you know, sometimes, you know, I know, I don't think I've ever believed that I had arrived. But there's a lot of times when I really began to cry out and seek God in a deeper way. God would show up and he'd begin to show me. He'd say, I'd say, oh, Lord, really? Yeah, that's right. You believed this. You thought this. You said that. You, you, you know, and it was wrong. And, and so <clears throat> I'm not timid when it comes to preaching the word of God because I'm going to say what the word of God says. But I'm, I'm not foolish. I'm not foolish enough to think I have arrived. Paul said, I have not yet apprehended that for which Christ has apprehended me. Now, I believe there's deeper and deeper and deeper dimensions of the spirit. That as I go deeper in the realm of the spirit, more, the more God will manifest himself. The more the Holy Ghost will floor, flow. The signs, the wonders, the miracles. See, a lot of people, though, here's the thing. They want the signs, the wonders, the miracles, but they don't want the divine character of Christ. They don't want the nature of God. But you don't understand that before Jesus got baptized in the Holy Ghost, he was 100% pure fruit. You ever, you ever go and, and pick up a bottle of orange juice? Like sometimes my wife will have me go and I'll pick up some orange juice or grape juice. And, I, and on the front, big bold letters, it'll say 100% fruit. And I'll take it home. My wife will get upset. Now, I don't know how they can legally lie. They said, honey, that ain't 100% fruit. I said, yeah, it is. Look it right on the front, 100% fruit. No, no, honey, read the ingredients. And you got to use a magnifying glass. You get the reading, so much of this preservative and so much of this, and it was concentrated, and that's and thus. And you find out, you say, how in the world can they lie? Well, the devil's been a liar ever since the beginning, hasn't he? See? And the devil tells a pretty good lie. And, 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 and see, this is kind of, this is, you got to really watch this thing because, first of all, the devil will come along and tell you that you're not right with God when you are right with God. And then he'll come along and tell you that you're not right with, he'll tell you you're not right with God when you are right with God, and he'll tell you that you're right with God when you're not right with God. That's what he'll do to you. Well, how do we know if we're right with God? Well, one of the main emphasis is do we do what God says? Do we do what God does? So we know the divine nature of God is at under attack in our lives every moment, every second. And of, and of course, the enemy is going to use the world, the flesh, and the devil. He's going to use society against the divine nature of God. See, he wants to kill the nature of God in your heart. And that's why Jesus warned us in Matthew 24. He said, the love of many shall wax cold because iniquity shall abound. See, the love of many, the compassion of many, you know? How many of the Bible says love covers a multitude of sin? Now, that doesn't mean it makes an excuse for sin. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about my relationships with you and my, your relationship with me. 
See, I, I, you know, we're here to help each other. Tell, tell, tell someone and say, I want to help you. <laughs> but I need help myself. <laughs> I want to help you. Oh, Pastor Mike, do you need help? Yeah, I, I got help me, Jesus. I say that all the time. Help me, Jesus. You'll ever say that to God. Lord, help me. Man, I ought to be further than what I am after 33 years. Pastoring almost 30 years? I'll be further than what I am. <laughs> he said, yeah, we know it, Pastor Mike. <laughs> well, I, I want you to see what it says here in the book of James, chapter 1. And James was really, really strong. And notice what it begins here in verse 16. Now, it's, it's talking about being tempted. Don't let no man when he's tempted, tempted. I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth any man. But every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Notice what it goes on to say here in verse 16 then. Do not err my beloved brethren. For in other words, brothers and sisters, we can err. The word err there means to mistake or misstep or to be deceived. You know, a matter of fact, in, in, in 2 Corinthians, I think it's chapter 11, verse 3, it says, I, Paul said this, I'm afraid lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve, so your mind should be beguiled from the simplicity of Christ. You understand, the enemy's nature, the enemy's character is one of deception. And see, he's out to deceive. Well, first of all, he wants to deceive us about our walk with God. He wants to deceive us about our relationship with the world. He wants to deceive us with our relationship with one another. That's, see, th this is how the enemy works. He wants to bring deception. Listen, the devil is so good at lying, he deceived a third of the angelic host to follow him. He convinced them because he is the accuser of God. See, the devil is accusing God all the time to you. Oh, you're not healed. God doesn't meet your needs. You can't do all things. You'll never get the victory. Oh, you'll never be free. Oh, you've got to lean upon the arm of the flesh. Oh, there's no use to go to church. It won't help you anyways. There's no reason to read your Bible. There's no, then why pray? Now, come on, we can go on and on about the lies of the devil. And the devil tells you that you can't because he knows you can. And I, I wrestled with his lies this week, you know, here about a month ago, I had a supernatural visitation of God and the Lord spoke to me and said, there's a lying spirit at work in the earth today and it's stronger than ever. And the Bible says almost the very elect themselves would be deceived. And he told me, he said, don't you succumb to the lies of the devil. You know what? I, I, I began to when this physical infirmity hit my body. Well, how do you know if you succumb to the lies of the devil, Pastor Mike? Because what you're saying isn't lining up with what he said. <laughs> Listen to this. How do I know, Pastor Mike, if I've been deceived? If what you're saying doesn't line up with what he said. If what you're doing is contrary to what he does. And so we can't deal with the lie until we acknowledge it. Well, Lord, I know your word says, but, 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 but. Well, that's the nature of a goat, isn't it? Goats go, but. You know, they'll butt you too. I used to have some goats across. I know the show bakers had goats, man. Yeah, now watch your, 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 your uh, uh, back end. I mean, when I, I, one time we had like 20, 20 goats. I, I had to watch it. I'd take food down there, and them goats, they didn't care about me. They would have killed me to get to the food. They didn't care. See? Me, 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 me. See, that's the nature of the devil. Now, I'm going to show you this is so important as we look at this. The nature of the devil is he's a thief. See, he doesn't receive the blessings of God. He steals the blessings of God. See, Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. See, you understand that the, the, the major difference between God and the devil is God is a giver. Matter of fact, look what it goes on to say here. Do not err, my beloved brother. Listen to this. Every good gift... And every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, in whom there's no vermin, it's not a shadow turning. See, I want you to understand God is a giver. How does God reveal his nature? How did God reveal his nature through Christ? John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Now get a hold of this, people. You've got to understand this. See, we've already taken the offering, so don't be concerned about that. God so loved the world that he gave. 
Do you know what? In 1 John 3.16, it says along the same line. And actually there in 1 Timothy 3.16, we looked at with, without controversy. But it says, hereby we perceive the love of God that he, gave, he laid down his life for us. See, it says, husbands, love your wives even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. See, the expression of the character and the nature of God is in his giving. It's revealed in his giving. Giving what? Forgiveness. He gave us forgiveness, right? He gave us healing. He gave us financial prosperity. He gave us our health. You know what God gave you? God gave you a mouth. See, everything that we have is a gift. Every good gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights in whom there is no variableness or he cannot change. He said, I am the Lord and I change not. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. I want you to get hundreds. How does God express himself physically with his love, his nature, and his character? By his acts of benevolence. By giving. You know what? If God, was if God is love, but he didn't give, and actually it tells us that faith without works is dead there in the book of uh, James chapter 2, verse 17. It says faith without works is dead. The works, you know what? How do you grow in grace? How do you grow in knowledge? How do you grow? By giving yourself. You got to give you got to give God. Remember, what did, what, did, what did Peter say? Peter says, we're going to give ourselves to prayer. We're going to give ourselves to the word. you got to give. That's the divine nature of God. See, there's two natures at work in us. There's the demonic nature, which is a nature of, of thievery. It steals. It steals. You know, that's why Malachi, he was saying, listen, if you don't give your tithe, you're stealing from God. And can I say something in love? It says thieves will not go to heaven. Now, I've told people this for years. I don't believe in tithing. I believe, I believe that everything I have is his. That means I'll give more than 10% to God. I will. But see, it goes way beyond that because, you know, lo the love of money is the root of all evil. See, we don't understand. Do you know why our whole society is falling apart? Because, uh, listen, we have people who are operating underneath demonic spirits in places of authority. I know they're stealing our money. They are. They're stealing our money. Understand that. But you know what? That doesn't, you know what? You know, you may not forgive me, but I got to give you forgiveness. See, whether or not you tithe, whether or not you give financially, it's totally between you and God. But let me, let me tell you, that God is not deceived. God is not mocked. What, whatever man sows, he's going to reap. So, yeah, I mean, listen, it's between you and God. It's not my job to make, to give. you got to give. You remember Paul, Peter said, silver and gold have we not, but such as we have, give I thee. Give I thee. See, how do we express the divine nature of Christ? By giving. Give. He, they said, silver and gold have we not, but such as we have in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. They gave what they had. What did they have? They had compassion. They had love. They had faith. See, all of the fruits of the Spirit, all the characteristics of God are expressed in what you give. You give patience. You know what I mean? You got to give, you got to give, you got to have patience with people. You're giving them, Right? I mean, when you say, man, I've got to have patience. Why? Because you're giving something. The, the character of God is expressed in what you do with it. So you've got to give yourselves to prayer. Like this morning, you're giving yourself to the word in the sense that you're, you're, I hope you have ears to hear. You're, giving, you're expressing God's character because you're giving your time to God. You know what's happening in the church? People don't even want to come out Sunday night or even midweek services anymore. They don't want to give themselves to the gathering of the saints. Well, I, And I'll be honest with you. Pastors can blame the parishioners, but actually a lot of pastors, they don't want to come to church. <laughs> well, now if they don't want to come to the gathering of the saints, then why should the sheep you know what i'm saying i mean you you got to give see i want you to now listen i know right now already the devil's put a roadblock in some of your minds because i mentioned money shame on you because you know i'm not after your money god's after your heart listen the bible says give me thine heart old man you know if god's got your heart he has all of you 
Listen, isn't it amazing? Before you married that little lady, you gave her, you, you gave her your attention. You gave her your sympathy. You gave her your love. You gave her encouragement. You gave her sweet words. You gave her flowers. Well, Pastor Mike, I don't believe giving flowers is biblical. Well, you better tell God that because he sure gave us a lot of them. No, I mean, God's given us a lot of flowers. You know what I mean? I mean, huh? Hasn't God given? Have you ever walked through a flower shop or walked out into the woods and seen flowers everywhere? Huh? God gave the earth to man, the Bible says. See, God is a giver. God's given us the sunshine and the blue sky and the, and, and the wonderful oceans and the rivers. And he's given us uh, the, the cute little rabbits that jump through the uh, clover. <laughs> he give the butterflies and the birds. Well, God, Bible, the Bible says God made it for his pleasure. Yeah, because he takes pleasure in us taking pleasure in these things. God is a giver. How does God express himself? In his giving. Brothers and sisters, he gives us the, 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 the parable about the man who was walking down and, and he got beat up and, 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 and a religious man walked by him and a, and, a, and a priest walked by him and a worshiper walked by him and a Samaritan walked by and he stopped. And what did he do for that man? He gave. Nobody was there to watch him, picked him up, dusted him off. Mended his wounds, put him on his own donkey, took him to a hotel, paid for his stay. Didn't even know the man. Didn't leave a, didn't leave a business card behind. He gave. He revealed the nature of God in his giving to a total stranger. How do we exp you know why a lot of people aren't growing spiritually? Because they're not doing what the word says. There's no benevolence. There's no giving. There's no reaching out beyond themselves. There's no helping anybody else. Well, but Pastor Mike, I've helped people and they took advantage of me. Well, just you got to have wisdom. You just, listen, not, not everybody that comes along do I help. Actually, the Bible doesn't allow you to help everybody. Matter of fact, he, Paul told those in 2 Thessalonians, he said, we, we hear that there's some among you men that are busy buddies. They go from house to house, sticking their nose in things they don't belong to have their nose in. They're not workers. He said, we forbid you to feed them. Don't even feed those rascals. They're lazy people. Now, don't look around. <laughs> They're lazy people. Don't even feed them. See, so we got to have the wisdom of God, but the nature of God is revealed in our giving. You know, that's why, you know what, because, you, you, you know, I, I, I read about men of God who really walked with God, like, like uh, George Mueller, who started all these orphanages. He never begged. He never tricked. He never twisted the scriptures to get people to give financially. Do you know what? Because the divine nature moved their hearts with compassion. You know how hard the human heart is now? People have got to send out pictures of babies that look like skeletons in order to move people to give. You know, here's the amazing thing. I'm not picking on liberals. I'm not picking on, you know, but here's, do you know what? If you, you'll find out, do you know who gives the most conservative Born again people who believe that abortion is wrong and all these they give more and and you know some of these main liberal leaders that, that are in offices if you check up on their giving to charitable institutions it's almost nothing and yet they're the ones talking about compassion they're the ones talking about love but it's a lie because the Bible says when you do something good for somebody don't let the other hand know you did it. He says, he that lends to the poor lends to God, and to him God will repay. So I'm, I'm going way beyond the offering plate of a church. I'm talking about that you express the divine nature of God in your giving. But see, there's the devil at work in our heart. He's the thief. And this is what the thief says. Listen, the thief says this in his heart. My will be done. That's a thief. My will be done. See, Judas had his own agenda. Oh, he was there with Christ, but he had his own agenda. He was going to use Christ as a way to make money. I understand people are using the pulpit to make money. I understand that. I know people are being taken advantage of it. It tells us that in the book of Jude, the book of Second Peter, the book of Titus, it says in the last days, there are going to be those who are going to rise up. Matter of fact, they're doomed to this damnation. I understand that. <clears throat> and, and see, I'm, I'm sorry to say a lot of people are being motivated to give financially out of greed. See, it's almost like gambling. 
Well, yeah, they said if I give to their ministry, I'll get a hundredfold return. I don't, listen, I acknowledge that God will bless me in my giving, but I don't give to get. I give because Christ moves me to give. I give because the Holy, because Jesus is alive in me. I can't help it. You know, we had all these guest speakers that came through this year. And I'm telling you right now, in the natural, we're not in a position to give beyond what people designated to them. And we even had people at times even take their regular tithes and give it to our guest speakers. Every one of our guest speakers, we gave them more than what came into the offering for them. But they had to come out of my own pocket. You know what? It's, it's not that I wanted to. I had to. Do, do you understand that type of Christianity? Where it gets so deep in your... Let me give you an example. You know, there's many... I did not want to pastor a church. I didn't want to... I, when I was a young evangelist, I wrote on my, eva my, my Bible in gold lettering, evangelist, as if that was going to free me up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I've had people tell me, oh, you're not a pastor. I said, okay, I wish you'd tell God that. <laughs> I, had a, I had a woman one time, a woman minister, a famous minister. She told me at least three times, you need to stop pastoring. I said, man, tell God that. You know, Paul said, I'd stop preaching, but I, you know, Jeremiah says, fire, shut up, I'm I've got to pastor. And it's not because I'm making a living off of it. <laughs> hey, hello. It's not for the popularity or, or the, uh, the acclamations or, or the pats on the back. I get more knives in my back than I get pats on the back. I mean, when you're in the position, people are going to find fault if you're going to preach the truth. I want you to know, brothers and sisters, but the divine nature of God within me just wouldn't let those people leave. And I always felt bad. I couldn't give them more. I always felt bad. But, you know, we had such, such wonderful speakers, some, and some of them weren't real happy with their offerings, but a lot of them, you know what? I'll just be honest with you. Jack Cole's daughter, she came through here. You know what she did? And I knew they needed finances. She gave it all back to the church. Now, she didn't ask me to tell everybody that. I said, Lord, there's a woman and a man of God. They care about the needs of others. It's, it's not me, 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 me. It's not selfishness. It's giving. It's giving. Now, I'm I know people try to take advantage of that. I keep single men, and they try, and I go way out of my way to help these single men many times, many times, you know, when they can't even pay rent. But, you know, I know that in my heart there's a time when I put my foot down and I said, that's it. No more. Because this is not my money. Hello, it's God's money. See? You know, I'm sorry to say that the spirit of selfishness is so deep in the church to where the reason why a lot of people can't even give financially to a work that they know that is of God is because they are so loaded down with debt because of a glitter in their eyes. See, that old, that old demonic nature, it will lie, it will steal, it will connive, it will manipulate, and the world will send you all kinds of applications for credit cards and, 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 and these checks you can sign and you can use them on. And you know why? Because they're, 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 they, they don't love you. They don't care about you. See, when Judas said that money could have been used to feed the poor, the Bible says he didn't say that because he cared about the poor, but he said it because he was a thief, stinking low-down thief. See, and that, and, and you, and he's, Pastor Mike, is, there, is, is, is that desire to steal in your heart? Well, listen, it's not a desire to steal money from other people, but you know, can I take, can I, I'm just going to be blunt with you this morning, amen? I, I don't know if I ever see you again, but let me tell you this, the devil wants you to steal from God what belongs to him. L let me give you an example. Do you know what belongs to God? You do. The Bible says, I have been bought with a price. With the precious blood, therefore glorify God in your body, in your spirit, which belongs to God. I have been bought by the blood of Jesus. Oh, Pastor Mike, I don't know if I can live underneath that kind of a legalism. It's not legalism, it's liberty when you give yourself to the divine nature. I mean, we ought to be in a hurry to give ourselves to God. You know what? I'm telling you what. This, 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 this thing's got to die. That's what Paul said. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but it's Christ that lives within me. Take a look over there just for a moment in 2 second, in, in second Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Listen, this, this, I'm just being honest with you. I don't want to steal from God. 
I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about me. I, I, wanna, I don't want to steal from God. I want to give God back what he deserves. He deserves my love. He deserves my worship. He deserves my prayer. He prays. He deserves my mouth to speak his word. He deserves it. Now, the old man in me, I've got to crucify him. That's what Paul said. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live yet not I, but it's Christ that lives within me. And the life which I now live, I live by the faithless son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. For in other words, I'm not saved by works, but because I love God. True biblical faith. It says, if a brother or a sister be naked and destitute among you, and one of you say to him, depart in peace and be a warmed and filled, notwithstanding that you give them not those things which are needful to the body, where does, where does the love of God abide in you? It's not the government's job to take care of people when they're going through hard times. It's the church's job. But we gotta be. But but it's not it's not it's not giving out a hand, giving money to every sob story because people are gonna connive. They're gonna manipulate to get what you have. They're thieves. They don't even know it. They're thieves. See, we're all thieves until we give our heart to Christ and we crucify that part of us. Let, let me let me get, give you an example. This 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 goes in my, so many areas. Let, let me give you an example. Uh, uh, you, t you take a look at a, a married couple. Sister or brother, you shouldn't be trying to steal the attention of someone that's not married to you. That's why God gave you a husband or a wife. See, I don't, see, I give myself to my wife. I give her because that's what God, Christ did. Christ, it says, love your wives. It says, Christ loved the church. He gave himself. So I give my wife. See, you know what? I don't always want to give my wife what she wants. I'm not talking about financially and things like that. You know, there's all limits. You know, we got to live within the bounds of our lifestyle. But what I'm saying is sometimes we don't, we, we don't give the time to our wives the way that God wants us to, man. And so some other thief will come along and try to steal her from you. Or vice versa. See, you need, listen, that, that don't, listen, I, I'm telling you what, I think one of the great, and I'm just going to be blunt with you, I think one of the most greatest tragedies in our society today, I'm just going to be honest with you, is the public school system. They're stealing from the parents what belongs to them. What do you mean what belongs to me? I, I, well, if you don't want them, that's one thing. But God put them under my nourishment that I could bring them up in the way they should go, that they would not depart thereof when they get old. But, you know, we, we, it, 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 we're so used to the devil stealing stuff that we don't even know he's stealing it. We don't even understand. And, and how do we overcome the weapons our warfare are not kind of but mighty through God? How do, how do we overcome these things? I'm telling you right now, this, this is an amazing truth. You do it by giving. Let me show you this, and we, we can hurry up and close up. Look here, and then, and then we hear what Brother Brian has in his heart for a little while. And don't worry, we're not going to eat till 1 o'clock anyways. Tell somebody, man, I, I love the word. <laughs> Tell them, I want the word. Amen. How, how many of you want the word? Okay, I'm speaking to those. Okay? And so take a look what it says here in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. According as his divine power hath what? Hath given us what? All things that pertain to life and godliness. See what God's given you? Well, I didn't know that God gave it to me. Yes, he's given it to you. You got to take it by faith. He's given to you everything that pertains to life and godliness. It is yours. Say it's mine. So he, and that, that, through the knowledge of Jesus that hath caught us to glory and virtue. God's called you into his glory and his divine influence. Remember, it says the woman with the issue of blood touched the hem of the garment. And it says the Bible says the virtue of God flowed into her and made her whole. God wants you to walk into that divine virtue. He wants you to walk into his divine glory. And we beheld the glory of the, fa of, of the, the, of the, of the, of the Father in the Son, the only begotten Son. The glory of God was manifested in Christ. What is, when, you, when you and I think about Jesus, of course, we say, well, uh, 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 you know, express with one or two words who Jesus was. Okay, we say, well, he was love, or he was a healer, or he was a deliverer. Let me, I, I, I would express it this way. Think about this. He was a giver. He was a giver. 
Stop and, and just think about yourself for a moment. Look in the mirror, the Bible says. Don't walk away from the mirror deceived. Are you a giver? You ought to be a giver. I, I, way beyond your money, you ought to be a giver. Give yourself to God. Give yourself to prayer. Give yourself to worship. Give yourself to praise. Give yourself to the word. Give yourself. Give yourself. Go out there and, 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 and be a solution to somebody's problem. And the, the flesh rises up and says, I don't have enough time. I don't have enough resources. I don't. No, 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 no. You, you're, that's a lie of the devil. Notice what it goes on to say here. Whereby are given unto us. See, God's a giver. Aren't you glad God's a giver? <laughs> sure is quiet in this Presbyterian church. God is a giver. Now, I, I, I know you're all givers. That's not for this church. That's for some, some other church down the road. That's not for this church. No, see, well, I know a lot of people in this church who aren't givers, Pastor Mike, including you. No, 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 you got it all messed up. Don't be concerned whether or not Pastor Mike is giving. Are you giving? Are you giving? For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Be led by the Spirit of God. I'm telling you what, you could be driving down a road, brother, and there's someone with a flat tire, and God might speak to your heart. Pull over and help them. Hello? Now, that doesn't mean you pull over every time you see someone with a flat tire. you got to be led by the Spirit of God. I, I shared a story with her years ago. There was a, a lady in our church, and, she, she, and, and I never encourage women to get involved with prison ministry among men. Something just ain't right about it. But this lady, she got involved with prison ministry among men, and she met a man, and I think that's why she went there, and she married him. And she was one of our worship leaders in a church I pastored. Many, many years ago, back, oh, it was 29 years ago, 20, almost 30. First church I ever pastored in Mount Union, PA. Well, she got married to this man. He got out of prison. And he was a, he was a, a cocaine addict or a crack addict, one of them. And all the money he made went up his nose. And they would end up with no food. And she was suffering terribly. Now, she stuck by him. She stuck by him. But she's suffering. Well, I'll be honest with you. I, I warned her. I told her, don't do it, sister. This isn't God. But she wouldn't listen. How many know that there's times we don't listen? Because why? Because we want what we want. See, it's not let his will be done. It's let my will be done. See? So the, 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 the deception in our life is being used by the devil to take advantage of us. You know, that's why the Bible says when Jesus was getting ready to be crucified, he said, the prince of this world comes and he can find nothing in me. I, I'm telling you right now, you know what, brothers? I'm telling you right now that, yes, our women should be women of faith. But you know how this is a supernatural weapon. Do you know how to keep the devil out of your marriage? Give her a listening ear and not always a yapping mouth. Huh? And vice versa. Hello, shoe fits both feet, right? Huh? Love your woman the way you should, and you might discover heaven in your home. <laughs> That's good news. You know, mom and dad, give yourself to your children the way you should, and they might never rise up against you and get involved in the world. You know, I can't really say I gave myself to my children the way I should, but I did give myself to my children way more than my mom or dad ever did. Now, my mom and dad, they didn't know Christ. You know, my mom worked two jobs. My dad worked, and, and he was out in the world all the time, and all of his kids went into drugs. We all went into alcohol. We all went into the world, I mean, into violence and trouble, see? But when I gave my heart to Christ, because he gave himself to me. We love him because he first loved us. I want you to realize what happened. My way of parenting, I didn't copy my mom and dad's way. And I began to give myself to my children in ways my parents never gave themselves to me. Now, I'm not taking all the credit. This is just the natural results because it's Christ that work inside of you. See, here's the problem. The selfish part about in our lives that says, I want somebody to love me. I want somebody to give themselves to me. I want somebody to help me. You got it backwards. 
Reverse it. Stop worrying about people giving themselves to you and start giving yourself as the Holy Ghost leads and the word requires. L listen, and this is what we talk. This is how God expresses himself. God so loved, he gave. Now, like I said, you got to be led by the Holy Ghost because I'm telling you right now, people, when they discover you have a giving heart, that part in their life that isn't right with God will try to take advantage of you. And you just don't get ignorant with them. You don't get ugly with them. You just say, well, I've had people come to me and ask me to do things. I'll say, well, listen, if the Spirit of God tells me to do it, I'll do it. I, if God tells me to do it, but I'm not going to do it because you're asking me to. No, I'm not talking about sending somebody away with no food in their belly. You understand what I'm saying? And even when people don't deserve help a lot of times, I'd rather, uh, I'd rather miss it and help them than miss it and not help them according to what you have. Amen? Now listen, if a minister is telling you you use your credit card by faith, just turn that guy off. You know? Because the borrower is serving to the lender. I mean, you know, it says, oh, no man, anything but to love them. So let, let's, let's, oh, man. Hey, look what it says here. Look, hey, whereby given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by ye, these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Now notice, we become partakers of the divine nature by what God's given to us. And, what, and there's nine virtues that are mentioned here, nine elements. Now let me say this very quickly. What do you do with these things? Well, let's just take a look for just a second. It says, <clears throat> giving all diligence... So you got to give diligence. Did you know this verse 5? And besides this, giving all diligence. You know, the Bible says God is a reward of them that diligently seek him. So, oh, Pastor Mike, but I don't want to give diligence. I don't want to give consistency. Now, I've been in this pulpit almost every Sunday for the last 25 years. With the paycheck or without a paycheck. Feeling good or feeling bad. Huh? You know, some guys win a medal because they worked at a certain place for 25 years and never took sick leave. That's what we call diligence. Man, they were diligent. So you got to give diligence. In what, Pastor Mike? In everything. Give diligence in reading your Bible. I mean, give diligence in fasting. Listen, if you can't fast one day, then don't decide to fast 40 days. No, people say, I've done it. Man, I'm going to believe God, hallelujah. I'm going to fast for 40 days. No, why don't you just try one meal, some of you? Lord, I, I'm just going to, a good friend of mine, Ron Morris, and I've known Ron for probably 20 years almost. Ron does not eat, I think, every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Ever since I've known him, he fasts those three days of the week. Ever since. I've been with him uh, in other countries. And he just, that's, he made a commitment to God. Now, don't get legalistic about this stuff, but that's what God laid upon his heart. So become, become diligent. I mean, in, in give yourself to diligence. And then faith, it takes faith to give. It goes on to say here, diligence, uh, giving all diligence. Um, <clears throat> Add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge temperance, to temperance patience, to patience godliness, godliness brotherly kindness. Uh, and, and so it, it, what it's saying is, I believe, believe all of these things are expressed, and we're going to look at it, and I'm going to show you how this works. Look over there in Luke 6.38. Y'all know Luke 6.38. 6, That'll be the last scripture we'll look at. But I, I want you to take a look at this, or the set of scriptures, because actually Luke 6, it, it begins with the Beatitudes. It's not Matthew like Matthew 5, 6, and 7, but it's actually to some extent the Beatitudes. And what Christ is going to reveal, he's, and a lot of people lose, use 638 as a, as a scripture on finances, and it's not. It says, given it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men uh, give into your bosom. And that's Luke 638. But it's not talking about money there. It's talking about finance. It's talking about uh, relationships with people. You know what? To have friends, you gotta be what? You got you gotta be friendly. Well, Pastor Mike, I just don't want to be friendly. See, you don't want to give yourself to friendliness. You want to be you got to, to, to if you want kindness. It, let me even say this with a dog. You know, you kick a dog enough, he'll bite you eventually. I mean, you know what? Hey, you know what? If you if you're nice to an animal, just to an animal. Their natural response is they want to be around you. 
You know, sometimes I see people going down the road and they're jerking their dog and yelling at their dog. And Well, most likely they didn't give that puppy a lot of attention when it was a little dog. Don't want to be around him. I, I had a little red bone coon hound. Got him when he was a real little pup. Spent a lot of time with this little red bone coon hound. With me all the time, all the time. And that little, and, I, and he got older and older. I'd take him on hunting. I'd call for that. I mean, if he was on a raccoon trail, I'd, 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 I'd blow my raccoon horn and I'd yell, Here, Red, help, help, help. Come on, Red. Here, Red, help, 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 help. Go on and on. And, it, and here, Red would come a running, his tail wagging. You know, sometimes when people call their dogs, they come with their tails between their legs and they wet the carpet. You see that with parents and their children. Can't wait to get away from home. Can't get away to get away from my parents. How do you know my kids don't want to leave? <laughs> well, how I many you know I must not treat them like dirt? I must be giving them some time, some attention, some love, some understanding, some money. Huh? I'm telling you, this thing flows into every part of life. I'm not talking about being a people pleaser. I'm talking about this an expression of the divine nature of God. So, well, Pastor Mike, my feet are really hurting. Well, just repent. I've got to repent all the time. All the time. God shows me. I mean, I was met. I didn't know. See, God sets me up. He began to speak to me earlier this week about this message. And I knew in my heart I had to preach it this morning. And he set me up. And he finally, and that's the 60-minute tape, Mike. And he finally, he finally just kind of like dumped on me. He goes, son, see? I go, oh, God. I've not been using my weapons, have I? No, your weapon is giving. Giving. Give, and it shall be what? Given unto you. Good measure. Listen, it tells us five things. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Well, I ain't, I ain't getting, I ain't getting nothing. Well, why aren't you getting anything? Why? Have you ever stopped and, are you a giver? Are you giving God time? Are you, are you giving yourself to prayer? Are you giving yourself to, oh, Pastor Mike, it's so hard. Yeah, it takes faith. It's contrary to your nature. It's contrary to the old man. You've got to give yourself to God. See, first I give God my heart. Then I can give to others. It says, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, strength, and being, and love thy neighbor as thyself. And you know what? You tell people this, and you're never going to be, be able to help them they, because that old thief inside of them just says, I'm not letting go. No, that's my time. You know, man, I, I appreciate you going to work and, 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 and bringing home the, 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 the money. But, you know, you know my, my dad, I never saw my dad wash a dish in his life. I never did. And uh, never cleaned up the house, you know. Now, my wife came from a home environment that was a lot more free than my house was. Should I say sloppy? <laughs> so when I first got married, listen to me. When I first got married, it was going to drive me nuts because I didn't want dirty dishes. I, I want a clean house, you know. Well, my wife wasn't of that persuasion. So the Lord finally spoke to me. He said, do you want a marriage or, or do you want to live single? <laughs> I said, Lord, I want a marriage. <laughs> so, okay, start. Okay, stop complaining and start helping. Now, you know, you can help and complain at the same time. But, 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 but I, that don't work. See, that's not the right nature. It says God loves a what giver? A cheerful giver. So, man, while you help wash your dishes, whistle a little bit. You know, sing a little bit. You know? Okay, you're picking up dirty clothes off the floor. Just smile. Well, wow, spoil her one. Well, no, you understand. If you're doing it out of a heart that's after God, the Lord will. I'm telling you what, there is times when I, I will clean the house, start cleaning. And it's going to happen a lot more. <laughs> Conviction will come on my wife and she'll start helping me. Hello? See, we're always waiting for somebody else. Why, why aren't they doing their job? Why aren't they doing what they should? No, express. How can we express the nature of Christ in this? By your giving. Give, and it shall be given unto you. How, Pastor Mike? Good measure. Press down. Shaken together and running over. 
uh, and, and um, I had a, and, and you can read the rest of it, and he actually begins here in verse 21, and he begins to reveal all of this to you and I. Um, and, and matter of fact, it goes on to say here, it's really awesome in verse, take a look there in uh, verse 39. This is talking about your giving. Listen to what it says here. He spake a pearl bond to them. Can the blind lead the blind? Shall they not both fall into a ditch? Listen, somebody who is not a giver is blind. That's the context. Given it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. There are people who are professional takers. They're thieves. They're stealing what doesn't belong to them. You hear what I'm telling you? L listen to this. It says, and the blind will lead the blind, and they're both going to fall into a ditch. You know, right now, half of the population of America think they deserve a free handout. They're thieves. You know what? I don't want your wealth. You say, yeah, but the wealth of the, uh, of the, the, wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. Yeah, but that's not my dealings. God does that. I knew a couple years ago there was a movement called the Kingdom Now movement, which has basically died out to a great extent because it found out the leaders of that movement were involved in a lot of filthy, immoral stuff. But I knew this young couple, sweet couple, spirit-filled. They came to us one day. They came, they came to our church in Hagerstown, and they, and they got hooked up with this group. And they said, oh, Pastor Mike, we found this wonderful house. It's such an awesome house, and we've been walking around it claiming it for ourselves. I said, is it for sale? No. I said, what? No, no, it's not for sale. We're just, but the wealth of the wicked, Pastor Mike. I said, guys, you're so wrong. Pray for their souls. You don't pray for their house. The Bible says, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's goods. Well, they wouldn't listen to me. They left the church, got mad, ended up getting divorced. He ran off with someone, and their lives were totally, the last time I heard it, their lives were a total wreck. They should have been trying to get the, the, those people's house. They should have been after their souls. Give them Jesus. Give them Jesus. Amen. And, and so this perversion is, is, is the di disciple is not above his master, but everyone that is perfect shall be as his master. Here it is. Everybody who's perfect will be like his master. How many know Jesus was a giver? Can, can I tell you something? And this is something I just recognized um, years and years ago. We, my wife and I pastored a little church in Three Springs, Pennsylvania. We started with about 50, 60 people, and I began to bus people in from the projects out of Mount Union and the surrounding community. <laughs> we asked for volunteers from these country people. You might call them country pumpkins. They were up in the mountains of Pennsylvania. All those people were so giving, you couldn't believe it. Matter of fact, sometimes I wish they wouldn't give. They cooked for me, and some of their food, just be honest with you, it wasn't edible. It just, you couldn't, you couldn't eat it. It was just, but they cooked it the way they, they thought it was, you know. And they, 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 they slot our pigs and they invite you to come and stir the soup with their pigs. And, you know, we get involved and, you know, and, and do all the different things with them. And, but we had a lot of workers for our children's church and we had a lot of workers in our, and, and, and we had like 40 children before we left there. And the church was growing and, and, and things were happening. And most of those people, man, we had a small, we had about, about maybe 30 adults in that church. And I think probably 20 of them were involved in some part of the ministry. We came here and built this church. And we had about 300 people, about maybe 120 adults. And we couldn't even probably get 15 people to help us. Couldn't get them to come and help. You know why? Because it's religion. This thing's got to transcend religion, people. You know, the Bible says the harvest is great, but the laborers are few. You just don't understand, Pastor Mike. Oh, I understand. Well, you and I both have 24 hours a day. I know some of you do work 8, 10, 12 hours a day. I understand that. But it goes beyond that, brothers and sisters. See, now I can't take you where I'm not. If I'm not a giver, how can I help you become a giver? I I'm so far beyond money. Listen to me. Give yourself to God. And then it goes on to say, it says, pull the beam in the next couple of verses. Pull the beam out of your own eyes. So this is not a message for you to critique each other. Yeah, Pastor Mike, get my husband, get my wife, get my parents. No, no. Decide in your heart, I'm going to be a giver. Why? Because that's what Christ is. And as many, it says, listen, uh, the student, if he's going to be like his master, he's going to be mature. He's going to be a giver. Jesus was a giver constantly you know what 
Then you enter into what we call the supernatural realm. Listen to this. He was a giver as a young boy, I believe it with all my heart. His mom and dad, did, he was daddy's little helper, mommy's little helper. I, be, I, I really, I'm convinced if you could have seen the natural uh, childhood of Christ while all the other kids were out there trying to connive to how to get out of work. Hello? Conniving how to get out of work. Now, I know that's for a church down the road, not this church. I know that's not your children or my children. Conniving how to get out of work. You know what? I watched as I was in, a, in, in, in the workforce of the world, I watched people spend more time trying to figure out how to get out of work than just get the job done. I, I began to work for a company in Mountain Union, Pennsylvania. Got out of Bible school and I went there. And, 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 and you know what? I gave myself to that job because I was doing it. It says, whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord, not unto men. Knowing that the Lord, you shall receive the reward of the inheritance. I gave myself to my job. I gave myself to it. You know what? Next thing I know, he puts me, and I was the youngest kid on the block over in this factory of maybe 100 people. He put me over the whole shipping and receiving department. And you know what? I found that that happened to me a lot of times when I was out there in the world. And when, before I got out of the military, when, when I was in the military, they would never have me do anything because I was unreliable. I was undependable. I was, I was, uh, uh, I forgot what they used to call us. But I just, I was a slacker. I wouldn't do anything. I gave my heart to Christ and I just began to give myself to prayer, God, the word. Now, I know people who give themselves to the word and they don't hardly work at all. Well, guess what? It's not the true word. Because if God is really work at your heart, you're not going to be, it's not, you listen, prayer and Bible study and fasting is not an excuse not to take care of your house, ladies. Man, it's not an excuse for you not to do your work. It will do, if you are really walking with God, you'll become a better housewife, a better worker, a better husband, a better student. You're doing it to the Lord, whether you get a pat on the back or not. And so before you knew it, I, I, I mean, God, God used me in that way because I just gave myself. I gave myself. You know what? I found out there's things that I had, I, I've never been able to talk, train to do anything. I said, Lord, I'm just going to give myself to this, and God would give me the wisdom, give me the knowledge, give me the And if you've been around this church for very long, you've seen it. You say, Where'd you learn to do that, Pastor Mike? I didn't. It just needed to be done. So I did it. Somebody had to do it, so I did it. See? But then people are trying to, but see, well, Pastor Mike, what if I'm around a lot of people who just, you know, they're just lazy. They're trying to, trying to get out of work all the time. Just pray for them. But keep your heart right with God. Uh, I had a, uh, one day my friend and I, we uh, found a dead raccoon on the road. We knew this coon had a, had, had a little, uh, had a bunch of little ones. So we went to our den. We got in there and we took all these little raccoons out of the den. And I got my, and I, I said, well, I'm going to take this one home. So I took this, and I named her Candy. Candy. She was just, she was just, she had no hair in her body yet. And her, I named her Candy, and I got a little milk eyedropper, and I began to give myself to Candy. I just, just, I, I lost all the pictures. I wish I would have, because I had a big old crop of hair, and she was big and fuzzy, and I fed her by my hand, and she got bigger and bigger. And I take Candy with me everywhere. I mean, she's even sleeping in my bed. And my mom didn't like that, so what I, but, but my, my, my raccoon got so attached to me that what would happen is she would go out at night, sleep in the back of one of our trees. We had a big, like, oak tree in the back. She'd come down, open up the screen door, come running down to the basement where I slept in the basement with my brother, and crawl up and wake me up in the morning, uh, uh, licking my face and pawing my face with her tender paws. And I mean, it was a wonderful relationship. And I mean, I was the envy of the community because she grew, she got big. She probably got, you know, 15, 20 pounds. She'd be sitting on my shoulder, you know. And, and I mean, we just had a wonderful relationship. I mean, Candy went with me wherever I went. And you know what? But I, I was a young teenager. I began to get busy. So I'd lock her up in her cage when I'd go away. And I'd start staying away and start staying away and start staying away and go out there and I'd give them food and, you know. It's like a lot of people want a pet. I want a horse, Daddy. I want a horse, you know. <laughs> and they take care of the horse for about a week, and next thing you know, the horse is, is, is ignored, you know. A lot of people do that stuff with their marriage. You know, the Bible says your wife is like a garden. Hello? And vice versa. And so... One day I got a phone call from my neighbor. He's really upset. He said, your raccoon is up in my garage, and he's tearing it all up in the air. He's tearing my attic apart. So I went over there and got up there, and I said, Candy, Candy, come here, Candy. Candy wouldn't come. Back 
in the corner, kind of scared. I reached around, tried to grab a hold of candy. She, she turned around and tore my hand up, man. She just ripped my hand open because they're nasty. It, and I finally got her, grabbed her by the tail, I think, got her out of there. You know what? Our relationship was ruined. And you know why? Do you know whose fault it was? My relationship with that raccoon was ruined. I, I finally took her out into the woods and I let her go. But you know why it was ruined? It was my fault. I stopped giving myself to my pet. You, you know, a lot of people, they're, they're, I'm telling you right now, by the Holy Ghost, they're, they're, their Christianity is a mess because they're not giving themselves to God. They're not giving themselves to prayer. They're not giving themselves to praise, to worship. They're not giving themselves. They're not, they're not. And you know what? If you don't give yourself to God, I guarantee the only time you're going to give yourself to somebody is when you want something. See? And then when you get what you want, you'll be on your way looking for someone else to take advantage of. Oh, Pastor Mike, them kind of, kind of people aren't really born again. Oh, yeah, they're born again, but they're not, they're not right with God. <laughs> so what are we going to do, brothers? You know, we're coming into the time of what people celebrate. I celebrate the birth of Christ. I don't celebrate all the other stuff. I'm not against the trimmings. You know, if you've got a problem with trees, that's your problem, not my problem. You know, I don't worship the tree. But I don't care if I come in your house, you've got a tree up. Amen? I don't care about that. Now, if you go away in a debt to buy all that junk, your kids are going to break anyways. That's ridiculous. You know what our favorite items are for Christmas? It's underwear and undershirts. <laughs> you know, that's what we get. Oh, praise God, I'm going to get some new underwear. I know what it is every year, Dad. Pair of socks, underwear. I said, well, yeah. <laughs> Forget the socks. Okay. You know, but, but you know, I'm brothers and sisters, I, I'm telling you right now, we got to, we don't lose your giving heart and if you don't have it get it back just because that you're going to grow listen every person in the pulpit today i can tell you about brother brian and tammy you know what i've known brian and tammy for over 25 years hasn't it brian and he's only been used of god you know why he's used of god because he gives he gives he gives he gives he gives he gives and if you're growing spiritually, it's because you give. You're not waiting for the doors to open up. You're not waiting for God to finally say, see, a lot of people are caught into the ministry. They're not in the ministry. You know why? Because they won't give themselves. Now, don't make a mistake like I did. When my kids were small, I gave myself too much to the congregation and not, not enough to my children like I should have. See, and to my wife. And the devil got in there. I'm telling you what, man, he about destroyed us. He did. He about destroyed my marriage. He about destroyed my family. He did. And then God had to wake me up and said, son, you're not treating your wife like Christ treats the church. You better start treating her like Christ treats the church or you're going to lose her. I'm telling you right now by the Holy Ghost, we better start giving people. And is it hard to give Pastor Mike? It'll be the hardest thing you ever did. But you know what? The nature of God will spring up in you. It'll be like a flower garden with all the seeds planted and the rain and the summer and the sun and he's going to come. And one morning you'll wake up and flowers are blossoming all over the place. That's how your marriage ought to be. That's how your life ought to be. That's how your relationships ought to be with people. You will be in tremendous demand. Here's another illustration and then we're going to pray. And I have Brother Brian come and share just a little bit with us. But listen to this. Everybody knows who Mother Teresa was. Just a little lady, little, little nun, come down a long line of Catholicism. She wrote a little book, just a little book. I read it, only book I ever read from her about loving Jesus and loving people. You know why? She is the most famous person. She didn't look for fame. She was there in Calcutta, the filthiest, dirtiest, rottenest city in the world. You know why everybody knows who she was? Because she gave herself. She gave herself. So you can live a wasted life living for yourself, or you can live a glorious life living for Christ and helping others. Amen? Let's get this benevolence back in our heart. Come on, be benevolent, man. Be like Jesus. Amen? Can you give the Lord a hand clap and a shout? <laughs> Well, just turn to somebody and say, by God's grace, I'm going to be a doer and not a hearer. 
Well, Pastor Mike, I, I'm already a giver. Good for you. Good for you. Don't lose it. If you are a giver, if you're in that mold, if you're in that flow, stay there. But, but, but you know what? Go deeper now. Listen, go deeper. Now, listen, this is so important now. You need to be led by the Holy Ghost. Uh, you know what? I, 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 I didn't mean to, but years ago as a pastor, I used people. God convicted me. Stop using people. Don't use them. Don't use them. They're not there to be used. Give them opportunities, but don't use them. Because that old selfishness, you know, we use people as stepping stones sometimes. We don't even know we're doing it, and we throw them away when we're done with them. A lot of people treat churches that way. They come, they get healed, they get help, they get delivered. Then the devil starts accusing them about that pastor and that church, and they find another church to use. Don't do that. Don't do that. Let Jesus rise up inside of you. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you for the word of the Lord that you have spoken to us this, this day out of your scriptures. And, Lord, I, I just thank you for all those who have hearing ears and listening hearts. And, Lord, I pray that th there would be a transformation in their life, that you would do a wonderful work in this coming year. Lord, that we would enter it into a time of giving. Lord, let us be givers, even as we see the, the love of many is waxing cold, and they're, and they're nothing but takers, and they're nothing but thieves, and, and all they care about is themselves. Lord, help us, Lord, to pull the beam out of our own eyes. Help me to be a giver, God. Help me to really love people. Help me to really care about people. Lord, I don't care about people the way I should sometimes. I don't love people the way I should sometimes. Lord, forgive me. Help me to really, really, really have a listening ear and a caring heart. And help me to be led by the Holy Help us all to be led by the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. And everybody says amen. amen. Brother, Pastor Brian, could you come and share with us a little bit here? 